Hello everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. We have got two fresh new bids coming in and one is from a new bidder that we haven't even heard of before. It is breaking news, so we'll get straight into it. A new Finnish entrepreneur, Thomas Ziliak Ziliakus, is wanting to invest into Manchester United. He's wanting to purchase Manchester United, but the way he wants to do it is through a fan ownership. He wants to purchase half of Manchester United himself and he wants you, us, the fans, to purchase the other half of Manchester United and have basically a joint ownership of him and the fans and the way this is going to work is he wants every fan to contribute about three dollars he says if every fan contributes three dollars if everyone gets involved then he can have this fan led ownership and he's actually put out a statement that i want to read out first and foremost because we haven't heard of him before we haven't heard what he's been offering and he has put out a statement on what he wants to do so make of this what you will and then we'll get everyone's opinions in as well so he's starting off he's saying any sport club ultimately should belong to its fans who has, says Thomas Ziliakos, who has been chairman of Finland's 32 times football champions, HJK, and an owner of Finland's six times hockey ice champions. He says the current development where billionaire, billionaire shakes take over clubs and control them as their personal playgrounds is not a healthy trend. Ziliakos is therefore building his bid to completely in a completely novel way where the fans of Manchester United will have ownership and an equal say in all issues that relate to football decisions at the club. He says the current market value of the club is just under 3.9 billion US dollars. This means that if every one of each of the fans of the club would join in buying it, the total sum per fan would amount to less than $6. My bid is built on equality of the fans. My group will finance half of the sum needed to take over the club and we will ask the fans through a new company that is being set up for this specific purpose to participate for the other half. If every joins, it means and if every fan joins, it means and less than $3 per fan. And each joins who will have access to an app which the fan from anywhere in the world can use to participate and cast his vote when deciding on the footballing matters relating to the club no decisions will be taken that are not supported by a majority of the fan base says Ziliakos he then goes on to speak about you know how racism isn't right in football and he wants to create an equal he wants to create a fan that is it's not a fan a club that is really inclusive and he wants to add all these things into Manchester United through a fan-led ownership but let's get some comments in on what you guys are thinking and we'll, we'll get we'll get other people's comments in as well and Charlie Malin says, exciting, but this model would not work. The club needs lots and lots of investment and he won't get that done. Impressive, but we want Qatar. And a super chat in from Daniel Longbottom saying, this is mental. Imagine a billionaire, uh, sorry, imagine a billion people having a say in a business. You may as well let the lunatics run the asylum. I mean, straight off the bat, I want to get into my thoughts on this. And my thoughts in this is, is I feel like he's... Thomas Ziliakos, this is no disrespect to him. I think he's living, living in dreamland a little bit. I just don't see how this could ever work. I don't see how you know what amount of fans are going to get involved in, in this situation, how many fans are going to want to invest. How are you going to, you know, take a consensus of a fan base? And me and Mark were just speaking about it earlier, who can't even decide on De Gea to make decisions about, you know, the new stadium, make new decisions about new signings. Everyone's got different opinions and no one's got expertise in this field. To have it 50% fan owned, I think it'd be a good decision if it was a club, you know, further down the line that already have everything in place, that already had owners that had proved that they can run this footballing club well, that had a brilliant stadium, that had, you know, a manager and, and, and players in that were winning consistently on the pitch. But Manchester United are in disarray. The Glazers have put us under massive, massive pressure. A new stadium needs to be built, built, new facilities need to be built. There's a lot of investment that's needed. And where does the money come from in this situation? Where does the investment come from in the summer? I just don't know if this could work for Manchester United now. I don't see it working for Manchester United now. And for starters, the Glazers aren't going to accept $3.9 billion anyway. So to me, this doesn't, just doesn't seem like a real, realistic bid at all. I mean, Mark's actually put a tweet out as well on what he thought, and I want to get that in involved in the chat as well and see if you agree with Mark as well. I think we're kind of on the same page today, actually, unlike the De Gea situation. I mean, if you want more of that, maybe go to the show later on. He might bring that up. The fan ownership bid is laughable, he says, and too idealistic. No way fans can run this club through the issues of the last 17 years. It needs to be billions of investment and clear, strong leadership. Fans can't agree on the starting right back. I agree. 
I agree with that that statement conclusively. It is idealistic. I said it's like living in dreamland. I just don't understand how a club that needs so much investment, that needs everything built from the ground up, that needs injection into the academy and injection into the facilities, injection into a stadium, you know, and we need money there to, 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 to get signings. I mean, we're... We've got we've been so pushed back when it comes to financial fair play because of how much money we have on debt with signings in the past. We've also got to shed loads of debt that our new owner's gonna have to, you know, take away from us as well. I we need someone, in my opinion, and it's, it's it's sad to say, we need someone who's really rich that can get the best people in class into each roles, each of the roles that are really important at Manchester United. We need someone that's gonna come in and put the best sporting director in charge, that's gonna put the best scouting recruitment department there who's going to run the academy who's, who's who's got brilliant experience at building academies and building up youth players we've got the best manager already thankfully well one of the best anyway who I think can be the best but we need to get the best in class in and I just don't see how this bid does that but I mean it's very interesting a new bid coming in and I'm sure some people will will like it I'm sure a lot of people will think yes you know who are against the likes of Sheikh Jassim because there are people out there and he's he's kind of discredited Sheikh Jassim in his in his pledge to Manchester United fans as well. He's trying to play on the play on the people that don't want a you know state funded owned club. And he made a dig at the Sheikh saying he wanted to make it his personal play toy, and that's what this football club shouldn't be about. Some people who are who are on that side of things are going to really relate to this and think, you know what, fan led ownership. We've been asking for that. I think this is a really good idea. We get to have our say. He's, he obviously wants to get the fans involved. There'll be a lot of people that are against the Qataris, really kind of interested in, in this bid and want to take it further. But at the end of the day, money talks and it's nowhere near the asking price of what the Glazers want. Casper says, the United first Premier League team to be owned 50% by rival fans. I mean, exactly. Who determines... What, you know, if you're a fan of Manchester United coming and, and owning this, who, who determines that? I mean, I just think you're putting way too much, you know, trust into what the fans are going to say and what how, who credits as a fan. You know, it's, 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 it's just one of these things. It's like people are going to disagree multiple times. No one has any expertise. I know people that are fans of Manchester United. I know friends that are fans of Manchester United. No, no disrespect to my friends. And you might think this about me. You know, everyone's got different opinions that don't have a clue about what's needed, that don't have a clue. There's people out here there that wants to keep Weghorst on a permanent deal. I mean, there's people that just don't know, I think, much about football that are going to have the say on these things. I mean, imagine Ricky. He's going to be sat there saying, keep McTominay, keep Weghorst, keep Martial, bring back Matic, bring back Dan James. Like, you know, what kind of volunteers as a fan and what say is actually going to have, you know, the, the strongest voice? I mean, obviously, it's going to be a huge amount of fans that, that come together on this, a huge amount. So, you know, not one voice is going to with, withstand the majority, but it would be a in, very interesting concept and I'm not sure if it would actually work. I actually don't think it would work. Paul Woodley says, not for me, Beth. Hope you hope to have a great show tonight. Yes, the Manchester show on for, you know, Mark and the United Stand is on tonight in Manchester, if anyone's coming to that. And Maria says, this bid is a joke. The guy wants some fame. And Lee Burnham says... Um, you don't know, Beth, it's an opinion and it's what Eric Ten Hag wants. I mean, it's not what Eric Ten Hag wants, it's what the Glazers want. Eric Ten Hag has no say on what the owner of Manchester United is going to be. And um, Jake JJ says this bid is a joke. I don't think this bid is a joke. I think it's a concept and I think it's something that could be explored. But I just think it's too idealistic. I really do. And I just don't see how it could work. And... I mean, it's coming out. The Finnish entrepreneur Thomas Ziliakis, founder and chairman of Nova M Group, made a takeover offer for MUFC through the company XXI Century Capital, and it is an investment company. Again, coming from an investment company, I'm not sure. It doesn't state whether there would be any debt on Manchester United. It doesn't seem like he has he has enough enough money to do this, or or if his company does. It just it just seems idealistic. Damo says, haha. This just isn't true. It's fake. No real billionaire would put their email address and phone number online. Good idea, but not true. Fact. I mean, I think it is true. It, it, is, it is true. That's it is coming out. Thomas Ziliaki, uh, Ziliakis has put a bid in. It is true. It's just so idealistic. It doesn't. It doesn't seem it. And yeah, he goes on to say about the app that each fan would have a part on from anywhere in the world. So he's making it worldwide, which is obviously good for the worldwide fans. And you can cash your vote in regarding to football in. 
relating matters to Manchester United and they'll be supported by a majority. So I assume yesterday we did a little poll on the United stand about, you know, what would you want to rebuild a stadium or would you want to revamp a stadium? It was like 60, 40 wants to revamp, 40% wants to rebuild. So if you put that poll out to everyone all over the world, that could be a deciding factor on a new stadium. See, to me, that's like, that's a nice idea that the fans have an, you know, involvement in that. But there's footballing things that the fans, for me personally, shouldn't have involvement in. There's financing matters that are bigger than what the fan base can give. And at the end of the day, Manchester United needs a huge sum of money to start competing with the likes of Manchester City. You know, Newcastle have now got huge money that can be invested into them. We need a lot of money to be invested to go back to, back to where we need to be. And I just don't think this gives us enough, if I'm being honest with you. But there has been... Another bid put in as well, not Sheikh Jassim and not Sergio Ratcliffe. We'll move on to that in a second. And the new bid that's been put in, is this is coming from The Times, and it's the Elliott management have made an offer for a minority stake in Manchester United, and they are also offering to finance other bids. The Elliott group just won't go away. It just won't, will it? It's like when you're on holiday, you're like relaxing in the sun. You know, you're on the beach, you have, you've got your lemonade in your hand or your Fanta lemon, which is, you know, my personal favourite beverage when I'm sat on the beach. You're trying to enjoy yourself and a wasp just keeps buzzing around you trying to get into your Fanta lemon. It's like, you know, just, 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 just go away, go away. We don't want the Elliott Group near Manchester United. I don't want a minority stake. This, to me, the fact he's willing to finance other bids, Again, alarm bells going off. If Sergio Ratcliffe can't compete with Qatar, will he be interested in potentially getting the Elliott management group involved to finance him and help him compete with Qatar? That could be an option for him. Another option could be the Glazers say, look, guys, you're messing about too much. You're not reaching my six billion bid. We think this club you know, could make a lot of money in the next few years. We'll just stick with the Elliott group. They can finance this stadium. We can go into even more debt with them that we'll have to pay back. And... We'll, we'll stick with the Elliott group. So this isn't this isn't good for me. It really isn't. And it's not something I want to be happening, especially when the deadline's gone further on for obviously Sheikh Jassim and Sergio Ratcliffe, which are the two which are the two parties that actually want, you know, to, to the full ownership of Manchester United. Obviously Sergio wants the stake of the Glazers and they they want to do it just through them. Like the Elliott group wants to support other bids, they want a minority stake potentially get into bed with the Glazers. That isn't for me and you know to me, this is just another, um, you know, it's another company seeing how what money they can potentially suck out of Manchester United Football Club and what they could potentially make off, you know, having the stadium. Them having money invested into the stadium, will they get a part name of it? How much money are they going to be getting through revenues through it? It's just, again, a money-making scheme for me when it comes to the Elliott Management Group and it's a way to keep the Glazers in in charge of Manchester United and have a, have a grasp on Manchester United. And it's just not my cup of tea. So hopefully this doesn't go any further, but you've got to take note of it because the bid has gone in. The Glazers could, could turn around and just say, yeah, we'll go with the Elliott Management Group. We get to stay, you know, we have to still get to have our claws on, on, on Manchester United. We still get to keep making money. Let's do that. So it, it's, it's worrying times. It honestly is the fact that they're still, still kind of lingering around. And a lot of people saying they still want... They still want Qatar. Is Qatar off? No. I, a lot of people saying, I think Qatar will still win the race. And a lot of people talking about my jacket if I've joined T-Birds in Greece. Guys, it's my new it's my new jacket. I, I quite like it. Little purchase from Zara. It's a little bit cold sometimes on the set. I wanted to wear it. I mean, if, if, you, don't, if you don't like it, then that's fine. But I love my jacket. And um, Joe Tommy says, I don't want to see the Elliot group. And... Yeah, has Beth joined the biker gang? You know what? I like my jacket, whether you guys don't like it or not. <laughs> and hi, Beth, the Glazers must get this deal done ASCP and get ready for the summer transfer window as well. I mean, this just could keep going on and on and on as well, especially with new bidders in the race. They're all going to... I mean, we've not heard whether the Thomas Siliakas has actually gone and gone to Old Trafford and looked round it and, and, you know, kind of had that tour of Old Trafford the way that... Sheikh Jassim's people did in the way Sergeant Ratcliffe did. I don't see that. How could that have happened? I feel like it could, would have been leaked in the news. But you know what? They have put in a bid. It is for part fan ownership. And the Elliott Group has put in a minority state bid as well. Make of that what you will. As soon as more news comes out on this, I will obviously bring it to you. But it is interesting. They said there was other bidders waiting to bid. I didn't believe it. I thought it was just Sheikh Jassim and I thought it was just Sergeant Ratcliffe left in the race. Clearly not. But moving on to... Shaitra Sim and 
Surgeon Ratcliffe. It is coming out from Mike Keegan that MUFC are set to receive their delayed bids in the next 24 hours. And Neil Custis from The Sun has said... Qatari banker Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani initially made an improved world record offer to buy Manchester United, but he withdrew that after the Rain Group later extended the deadline by 48 hours and is planning now a revised offer. So, I think what happened here is Sir Jim is waiting to see what the Qatari offers because he obviously has a ceiling. Realistically, We've, we know that Sheikh Jassim doesn't want to pay extortionate amounts. He doesn't want to be ripped off. He doesn't want to be led down a road where it's going to be ridiculously overpaying for Manchester United, even though he has the money, even though he has the money. He could do it, but he doesn't want to do that. Sergeant Ratcliffe doesn't have the luxury of being able to go, you know, look, here's six billion. I'll take the club. Sheikh Jassim, if he wants to, could do that. So I think it's, it's, it's a game of poker, as Mark was speaking about on the morning show. I think Qatar was going to put in their bid and Sir Jim wanted to wait to see what that was. And if it was in the realm where he could offer them more, he wanted to go with a higher bid to give him a bigger stake and potentially, you know, swaying the Glazers to go down and making him potentially an exclusive bidder. So I think he wanted to see what the Qatari's bid was before he put his own in, which is why he asked for the extension in the deadline. And as soon as Sheikh Jassim's people and him himself probably saw that he'd been offered an extension, he thought, no. I want to take my bid back because he doesn't. He, I don't want him to see what. I don't want him to get leaked what my bid is. I don't want him to see what it is. So I'll take it back and I'll wait for him as well. So it's basically the moment a standoff, and they're going to have to put the bids in as well within 24 hours. It's coming from Mike Keegan, but at the moment they are revising their bids, and you know they're just going to have to put a bid in. And at the end of the day, one's going to be higher than the other. I don't think. I think it came out from Sky Cavi yesterday that what Sheikh Jassim's main concern is, is he doesn't want to be bidding against himself. He doesn't want to put in an offer and then, you know, Sir Jim's be way lower and he could have actually got away with getting lower for Manchester United. He doesn't want to overpay. So it, it is, it's a game of poker at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see, see what happens with this in the next 24 hours. And we've got a chat coming in from Joe Tommy saying, Sir Jim is making this buyout impossible. Jim needs to give up, give it to Altani. And... Jacob Thompson says, probably a representative democracy like Real Madrid. Chairman will be more of a politician than a professional. And then Jim and Ineos under the gas, under... No, I'm not reading that one out. 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 But, yeah, it, this is a situation. You've got, obviously, the bid coming in from Thomas Siliakis, who values the club at 3.9 billion. He wants half the fans to get involved and run it that way. You've got the Elliott group who are willing to prop up the Glazers and keep the Glazers in place or potentially offer a minority stake to another bidder who can't quite potentially maybe afford to get the full bid in for Manchester United. And then you've got Sheikh Jassim and Sergio Ratcliffe who are now in a standoff situation and neither one wants to be outbid by the other. They want to see which, either, which what each other's bids are before they put it in, but it's going to have to happen at some point within the next 24 hours. But talking about the ownership, isn't it, it's going to affect areas all over the pitch. We've already spoke about the new stadium. We've talked about the academy. We've talked about the women's team. We've talked about, you know, summer transfers. But it also is going to affect contract situations. We're sat here thinking, you know what? How is this summer transfer window going to happen? Like, if this is still going on in June and July... Are we going to buy players? Are we not? Is the new ownership going to potentially have a say on this? Are they not? Is it going to still be Glazer ran at this point? What is going to happen? But the same thing comes down to contracts. We've had news come out regarding Marcus Rashford's contract. And this is coming from Neil Custis at The Sun. Rashford, 25, is expected to sign the biggest contract of his career as he entered his prime years. His camp understandably want to wait to see what the Qataris, for example, could offer. And again, it is confirmed that Marcus Rashford will delay signing a new contract until the new owners are confirmed. And first of all, what I want to say on this is it's completely understandable. You never know. The Qataris could come in and could say, Rashford, here's 500 grand a week. It could happen. Of course, his representatives are going to want him to hold off. He could sign away now on, you know, say it's 250, 300 is going to be rumoured right now for what Rashford could be signing on to. And then... If he would have held off until the new owners come in, they could have been like, no, sorry, you know, we'll give you 500 grand a week. And it'd be, but he's already signed it then for like five years. He's going to obviously wait. And I think that's completely understandable from 
he's going to want the most money he can potentially he could possibly get and so is representatives as well so this is also going to affect contract situations when you're looking towards the future of the club and what way whoever investment or whichever owner comes in is going to run Manchester United. My UK says, OK, so we help pay for half of the club. Where does the four billion come from for stadium and facilities? That's exactly what I was trying to say at the start of the show. I just don't think the money's there. Who's going to, you know, pay for the billions that are going to need to be invested into a stadium? Who's going to invest into the transfer window while we're kind of leveling, leveling out this financial fair play? It, where's the debt being paid off here? Like, we've got... A, who's going to upfront the money to invest into Carrington? We've got a lot of things that need paying for initially when the, first, when the owners first come in. If we're putting up half the sum to buy it off the Glazers and they're putting up the other half, they've not mentioned that they're going to pay for the stadium. They've not mentioned that they're going to invest in facilities. They've not mentioned any of this. They've just mentioned that they want to put the fans first on this, on this fact and they want the fans to be involved. Kind of, you know... T appealing to, to the fans basically on this but I want to know who's going to pay for the stadium I don't know where, how are we going to get a new stadium I want to know what summer transfer windows could look like I want to know what amount of investment is this guy going to put into the I into Manchester United so for me it's all it's too vague I think his statement goes off on a lot of different tangents and I just don't think he really actually explained what his plan is to do with Manchester United apart from the fan ownership side of things and Neil McKay says, if Sir Jim really loved the club, he would back off and say the best thing for the club would be Qatar and he would get respect from all of us. You, you, this is what I wanted to say as well. You never know. Sir Jim could be a great owner. We don't know this yet. I don't think it's fair to write him off. He's trying his best to get hold of Manchester United. He could still potentially be the owner of Manchester United. I don't think it's fair to start it on a negative front hold from him. My preference is Qatar. I think they can do way more. I think they have a way higher ceiling. But you don't know what could happen yet. So I don't think you would, I would write him off straight away. There is people out there that want to gym and there is reasons why people would want to gym. But yeah, lastly, I just wanted to bring in a little bit of news about Victor Lindelof as well before we wrap up the show. If anyone if anyone's seen, Victor Lindelof has just done an interview while he's away with his Swedish national team on international break. And Victor Lindelof was speaking and he was saying he's not playing the amount of minutes he'd want to at the moment. The reason why he is a footballer is because he wants to play games, he wants to be involved in the first team, he wants to play minutes, and that at this moment in time he's not thinking about moving from Manchester United, he's not thinking about what's going to happen, but he wants to play. He wants to play minutes for Manchester United and he, he wants to be involved, he doesn't want to be a rotational player. He said at the moment he's not in the best situation, but at the end of this season, this summer, we will analyse the situation and we'll see what is best. To me, that seems like if I'm still not playing at the end of the season, I'm going to look for a move. And you know what? As much as I don't want him to go because I think he's a brilliant rotational centre-back, fair play to Lindelof for actually having an ambition and wanting to maybe potentially move away to get that first-team football. He doesn't want to be a rotational centre-back. He wants to play, and he could definitely play. There's a lot of good clubs in Europe that he could play first-team football for. If I was Lindelof, and we were speaking about this before the show as well, I, if I was Lindelof, I'd be kind of knocking on to Eric Ten Hag and say, why am I now fourth choice? Why is now Maguire playing over me? Is it because he's club captain? Is something happened? Have I done... It, I, I'm not, what did I do in my last performance that, you know, you didn't like? Because Lindelof, when he last played with Martinez, was brilliant. He filled in for Varane and he was brilliant. Lindelof and Martinez have, have, have proved that they can play really well together before. We were saying he was he had a great performance. He looks much better when he's next to Martinez than he does Maguire. Why is suddenly Maguire playing over him? I don't understand it. I think Lindelof is a much better centre-back than Maguire. I think it's unfair that they're actually compared, if I'm being honest with you. I think it's really unfair that they're compared because Lindelof is, 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 is a greater player, in my opinion. So to lose Lindelof in the summer because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to be that rotational centre-back and he's fed up of sitting on the bench and having Maguire play in front of him, you can understand it. If I was in Lindelof's position and I saw Maguire playing in front of me, I'd be like, hang on a second, why is, he, why is that happening? I'm the better player here. Is this politics? What is it? So I can understand why he wants to move, but if you ask me now whether Maguire or Lindelof should move on in the summer, I would say Maguire. I think Lindelof should stay. But if he wants first-team football, that's the decision he has to make. But if Maguire ends up staying and Lindelof ends up going, I'll be gutted if I'm being honest with you. And um, Lindelof over Maguire. Maguire and Lindelof both need to be sold to raise transfer funds. 
Oh, Parky says, because Maguire is better than Lindelof. It's not that difficult. A lot of people will disagree with you on that. For me, Lindelof is miles, ahead, uh, miles better than Maguire, if I'm being honest with you. Miles better. I think both of them aren't good enough to be first choice. But Lindelof is a good centre-back. And I think you see better of him when he plays next to Varane or if he plays next to Martinez. And, yeah, sell Lindelof, Maguire, McTominay, Langer and Dean Henderson and Martial. A lot of people say maybe we should just sell both and get new centre-backs in. I mean, I thought there'd be a little bit of, you know, backlash on, on Lindelof wanting to potentially leave. I think that, to me, sums up he, he probably is going to look for a move. We'll see what happens towards the end of the season. Maybe he might start getting a bit of game time now. We saw when Palestri came out and kind of his agents were really, really upset at the amount of game time he was getting. You saw Ten Hag kind of give him a little bit more. Ten Hag will have a say on this. When I was in Sociedad, he actually basically said Lindelof's his third choice centre-back and Maguire's his fourth choice centre-back. He, he summed it up in a few words. I wonder what's happened from then until now to make him change his mind. A lot of people saying it's because Maguire is captain. Maybe it's because Maguire was going to the England squad, people are saying. I doubt that would be a factor in Ten Hag's mind. But I'd, I'd love to know. I'd love to... I'd actually... You know, if, I, if, if we get into a... If, well, we will be in a press conference. But when we come back from the international break, a great press conference question would be, why is Maguire now ahead of Lindelof in the pecking order as a centre-back? That would be a good question because I'd like to know the answer. CY7, a member for 20 months. Glazers still doing their thing. And... An interesting take, Maguire is only playing, so teams get to see him playing and might want to buy him. Don't think Ten Hag wants Maguire. No, I don't think Ten Hag wants Maguire, but I, he probably doesn't want both. He probably wants two new centre-backs in. Sell both and get Kim Min Jae in a promising young centre-back with potential. I mean, that would be a great route to go down, but again, are we going to be in a position in the summer where, we, where we're going to be buying multiple players? Are we going to have owners in that are going to want to buy? Is the Glazer still going to be in charge? We just don't know how this summer is going to play out. Damo says, Ineos has been given more time because of the collapse of the Swiss bank as well as the huge explosion on Ineos site last night. Both affect interest rates. Yeah, that is something that can definitely be, be taken into consideration of, can take consideration. Obviously, it's never nice to see stuff like that happening, but, you know, at the end of the day, this is a business deal and we need to get moving with it. We need to crack on. We need to know what where people stand in this situation. So I, I think this needs to get moving. And he's got 24 hours. Nothing's much is going to happen in 24 hours that's going to change the situation, in my opinion. I mean, it might do, but for me personally, it won't. But yeah, that is kind of what the state of play is right now with Manchester United. And that is where we're at. We've got two bids come in. One from Thomas Ziliakis, the Finnish investor. One from Elliot Group. And then we've got... Shaich Sims and Sergin Rackless on the way after the extension. Get your thoughts in on the Rashford contract as well. Do you understand the fact that he doesn't want to sign on a new contract yet? He wants to wait for Qatar to come in. They could potentially offer him silly money. I understand why he wants to do it. I understand why his representatives are holding off. And what are your thoughts on Lindelof potentially leaving in the summer and voicing his opinion on his game time and what he what he expects from Manchester United going forward? Make sure you guys have your say. Get in the comments down below. As always, we'll be looking through and looking for your opinions. It's all about what you guys think. Thank you for watching the video and getting involved in the chat down below. Make sure you like the video as always. Make sure you subscribe. We'll be back for more updates as they come.